Good afternoon. Uh, first of all, thanks, Dean. Um, I'm honoured actually to be given the role and appointed first ever inclusion ambassador for Northumberland FA. Um, I see obviously we've got a lot of people here and organisations. Obviously the strategy that we want to put forward is we feel as though football should be for all and we don't want any kids uh, missing out. Um, as a product of grassroots football, obviously from the North East, I know how important it is to actually be involved with football. As a kid, you'd be amazed that actually the things that you learn from being involved in football and, and, and kind of uh, projects like this, or certainly coming to clubs like this, uh, the life lessons that you learn that stay with you um, all through uh, all through my career, um, the friendships that, that I built up and some of them I actually still speak to now, and the different skills that you pick up as well, the communication side, so, uh, side of things, uh, the teamwork that you get. Um, I found it absolutely invaluable. When I spoke to Dean about this project, again, I know firsthand what it's like uh, not to have the kid. I mean, I'm from a council uh, state, we didn't have anything. Um, I was always used to getting kind of hand-me-down boots that were either far too big or far too small. Um, I did have a friend that actually had a pair of boots, but he had them boots made in the makeshift sort of trainers that he could wear for school because his, his, his parents couldn't afford both. So he'd wear his boots for training and then take the studs out and actually wear, wear the boots uh, for, for school. But as I said, the, the lifelong kind of ambitions for that, uh, as a kid growing up, uh, what you learn from different people is invaluable. So that's why we find it a fantastic strategy and a project that we're trying to look at. And obviously, we need your help because it is at times and at clubs expensive to be paying for kids, and certainly if you've got more than one child. Um, to be paying those um, sort of costs all the time, especially with the price of living as well, it's very, very difficult. As you've entered the building, you've been in, hopefully you've seen where we're looking to, that these kind of things are going to be available in um, North Tyneside, Northumberland and Newcastle, where we are wanting uh, unwanted kit. I've been watching the video as well of some of, some of the stuff that's been getting dropped off in it. You know, some of the boots, I looked some of them boots when I was growing up. Um, but it is a fantastic thing that we can all get involved, but again, we need your help. Um, another thing which I'm really proud of, obviously we've just had a speaker as well, just come up and I've met a couple of boys before with mental health. Again, that's something is very close to my heart because believe it or not, when I finished football, I suffered from, from mental health. Um, Initially, I'm kind of thinking when I come out of football, I haven't got to get up, I've got no time frame, I'm not having anybody to tell me what to do. But ultimately, because you've had that, somebody telling you what to do, the way you have to be, this is the kind of task that you're being faced with. Um, initially, as I said, I, I just thought, well, listen, that'll be brilliant. But all of a sudden, I just had no structure whatsoever. Um, and it, it really affected me. To the point where it affected not only myself but also the people around me and especially my loved ones. I was dead lucky in, in one respect because I actually went and spoke to my friend about it. I mean this is about 15 years ago and lo and behold my very good friend was also suffering the same. So we actually helped each other. Um, we ended up certainly through Covid uh, getting together with a few ex-players that knew about myself and, and, and my friend and we'd set up a group called Walking's Brilliant. And again, we've spoke to the lads about this, about how important it is to get out, go for a walk, get some exercise, and actually just go and talk about your issues. Because I think, thankfully, nowadays, it's, it's not as kind of stigmatised as it was back in the day. Um, and it's always nice just to sort of get that mind clear so you can go out and hopefully be more, certainly more productive in what you do. Um, ultimately, the message is simple with the mental health. You know, it's, it's okay not to be okay, and certainly ask for help if you need it, because there's always, hopefully, somebody there just to give you a, a lend an ear, if anything, more than, more than anything. Well, that's for me. I'm, I'm looking forward to this project. As I said, it's very close to my heart. I do get asked a lot to do and get involved with a lot of things. So, to be quite honest, I can't do a lot of things, but certainly this one, when I spoke to Dean about it, was definitely something I want to get on board with. With your help, we can achieve what we're looking, looking to do. 
So I just want to say thank you everyone for listening. I'm going to hand you back to Dean uh, and he'll give you a bit more.